Hi everybody, today I wanted to talk to you about some of the things that I've been loving. Do a little monthly beauty favorites, all the things that tickled our souls, you know, in January. And what an interesting start to the new year it has been. I had a little bit of a slower start. I was feeling good about the month, hopping right to it. Hot girl winter was rock and we were playing with bright lips, you know, having fun. And then I had a little toe gate incident and I've just been, you know, the last week has been interesting, let's just leave it at that. But I still have some beauty favorites that I wanted to talk to you about from the month and I thought it would be fun to do so while getting ready together so I can show you everything in action. So let's start with the base. I put my brows on already, hair is tucked, we're ready to go. Let's talk about some fabulous things. So starting with the base, I actually wanted to start with two on favorites, show you two of the products that I tested this month. The CoverGirl Simply Ageless Skin Perfector Essence and also the Hourglass hydrating skin tint veil. These are two products that both get a lot of love on TikTok specifically, I see it all the time. I had bought this one actually a few months ago, back when it first launched and I tried it once and I was like, oh, I didn't like that. And then I pulled it out again to be like, do I still not like this or was that just a moment? Yeah, can confirm I still don't like it. And both of these did kind of the exact same thing on me where I apply it and it just never sinks into the skin. It's just like pushing bits of pigment around. It balls up, it rolls. It's just not very nice. Someone actually had a really good way of putting it in, in descriptive words, it said it's like a, a sunscreen swipe. Like when you have that really thick, chunky, white physical sunscreen, you do a swipe and it just never blends in. That's what these feel like for me on my face. Not ideal, not great. For me with very dry skin, it just, just didn't work for me. When I am testing a foundation, I want it to apply and sink in beautifully and look so natural and lovely. And even if it has a matte finish, even if it's more full coverage, most of the time when a foundation is good for me, I apply it and then you can't see it and there's no bits of pigment and streaks left behind. So that's kind of what I look for. Those were very streaky on me, that's that. A foundation that I've been loving, I did a little shopping through of my stash because I'm trying to make my way through my things. I'll get to my empties later, but I did use up my Chanel foundation. So I was going through and doing a little shoppy shop. I pulled out a few. I'm kind of gonna be making my way through. I'm making my way downtown. Uh, making my way through the foundations and seeing which ones still hold up and I'm still loving. So I've been using the Estee Lauder Futurist Hydra Rescue Foundation. I have this one in the shade 2N1 Desert Beige. Really love this one. I also have a deeper shade that I use in the summertime or when I have a tan on. And honestly, it's just been a minute since I used it. And I pulled it out this month and I can confirm that it's one of those beautiful foundations that just sinks into the skin and looks so natural. It's a perfect option if you have dry skin. I really like the shade match for me. It matches my skin, but it's just slightly warmer, but not in a too pinky way. Sometimes if it's warmer in the more pale tones, it can be very, very pink, but I, I find that this is nicely beige and gives me a little a little hint of warmth. So definitely gonna take that down my neck, but what a beautiful foundation for every day, very hydrating, and it's been the one that I have been reaching for this month. And that's the layer foundation applied. Absolutely stunning, love this finish. Absolutely, my most favorite word, isn't it? <laughs> I really thought that I was gonna have this as an empty to show you this month, but it just keeps going strong. Thank you to those of you who suggested moving the product from the sides into the middle because it's just given me so much more life. And it just goes to show how much product you actually get in your makeup products and how long they can last, especially when you're using them and loving them every day. This right here is proof that a little bit goes a long way. So perhaps this will be an empty in February, but as of now, still going strong with the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer in the shade Light Medium. I use it every day. So let's have a little chat about blush. Right now I'm applying the Nude Sticks Bareback because I actually wanna show you something in a hot second, but I wanna talk to you about the e.l.f. liquid blushes because this was a new product that I tested out this month. And the shade Dusty Rose was definitely my favorite from the shades that I picked up and it was beautiful, it blended out so nicely. These are really, really pigmented. So a lot of the liquid blushes that I use, like the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer blushes, they're just really thin and so easy to blend out. And I kinda don't have to think about it when I'm applying it, I can kinda just slap it on my face Face and I can't really go overboard, which is nice. These ones you can go overboard. They're very, very pigmented and they are a little bit more on that matte side. They don't have that same like juicy, watery, dewy glow on the skin. So you have to be very specific about blending it out. So the shades are really nice. Obviously the price of them, you can't, you can't beat it. They're so affordable and beautiful, but you do have to spend a little bit more time with them. So for me, for my everyday makeup, I just want something that I can just slap on and I don't have to think about. So even though I love this shade and I'm gonna continue to use it, it doesn't necessarily fit into my easy everyday makeup category. I'd have to be a little bit more thoughtful about it. And then I also wanted to mention that the shade Berry Well, the deeper one, 
it was beautiful, but just a word to the wise if you are also pale. Again, be very, very careful with how much you use of this. It's very easy to go overboard and I did have to sit there and blend it out with all my different brushes and concealer and whatnot. So the pigment is there, which is also nice. It's gonna work for so many more skin tones, but yeah, it's a, it's kind of a favorite, but also that comes with a warning for all my lazy girls out there. That might not be the blush for you. Also, I just will say again, bareback is just really, really the one for me. I, I love it so much. I can't seem to quit it. I have been playing and I have been using other products in my stash and still testing new ones out. But when I just reach for my easy blushes for every day, that's like number one. <laughs> Still going strong with the Tower 28 concealer. This one as a shade match for me in the winter is just perfect. I love how it applies. It wears so beautifully throughout the day and I'm still going strong with the underpainting method. I'm happy to say that I, I have been remembering to do it. It's kind of like a modified underpainting. I'm not going full, full blast with the foundation over top of everything, but I have been consistently applying my concealer on top of my cream contour and blush. And I do think it has a really nice effect on making it so much more natural. And I use a smaller brush to blend it out and then I will go on top with my foundation brush, not adding any new product, but I do a final little buff over top and I find that it just kind of gives that similar effect, especially when you're doing a more natural everyday makeup, you're not caking on the layers anyway, you still kind of get, get the idea, the idea there. I'm gonna do a little setting with powder and I pulled out my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder, which honestly I haven't used very much in a hot minute. But because I've been using so much powder lately, I thought, oh, let me just pull this out, see how I feel about it as a finishing powder, especially on days when my makeup is very light and natural. I don't necessarily need to like set anything in. I can just have a sweet little dusting of this and add it to the project pan list because she is a swift contender. Now going back to blush for a second, I kind of laughed at myself because for the most part, I think I just need to make it a rule that I stop speaking in absolutes, which we've had a lot of this month, really, or for the last couple of months, honestly. And it was funny because I was like, power is over for me. I am not into it. I have been loving my cream products and I'm never going back. And I laughed as I was shopping my stash and going through all of the powder products that I have. And I'm like, obviously, obviously I'm not giving up on powders totally. I'm definitely in a cream phase, but let me just play devil's avo toast for a second and just pull out some of these blushes. So I had pulled out my hourglass blushes. I have Euphoric Fusion, which paired beautifully with my more berry colored blushes as a little setting blush on top. And then this one, Ethereal Glow, just goes so nicely with bareback. And I used this combo the other day and I was like, ugh. Now when I do my makeup, I'm using powder. I'm setting my face with powder, but I kind of never apply the powder to my cheeks. I always kind of leave it as a no-go zone for the powder. And when I used this on top of my blush the other day, I was like, wow, absolutely not necessary for everyday makeup to double up. But just because I had said that being like, we don't need a cream bronzer and a powder bronzer and a cream blush and a powder blush. But there is a look for that. It definitely adds that layer of diffusion to the makeup that doesn't exist otherwise. And it's just different looks. The cream makeup I think gives a really nice natural glowing finish. And then having that kind of diffused powder soft finish to the makeup is also a really nice look. So I understand why people do double up and why we have doubled up on the cream and powder products. And I just thought I'd let you know that <laughs> I did pull that out and I thought the combo was beautiful. And if you're into the powder cream mixing life, gorgeous color combination and also beautiful for that really soft focus visual, which Hourglass historically for us, who've been in the YouTube space for a long time, know that that's what Hourglass was like known for back when they launched all their powders. So that's the little, the little blush combo I've been rocking with. I 100% forgot to update you on the Fenty Easy Drop Blur and Smooth Tint Stick. Now I just used this. I've used it what, three times total. Definitely one that I'm gonna be pulling out later as we go further into spring. But while it's winter, while my skin is very, very dry, this is just not the one to be using. It's a really pretty natural matte finish. It lasts really well throughout the day. So this is actually gonna be a fabulous one to pull out for special occasions and longer wearing makeup. But for right now, for my everyday makeup, definitely want the more hydrating options, but it's still beautiful and I'm keeping it in the stash for sure. The shade match is also divine. Let's talk about lips for a second. You guys have sent me so many fabulous recommendations for finding a shade match for the NYX Nude Beige. It hasn't happened yet, but I've gotten some great recommendations for you that I need to keep testing. And I wanted to say that this month I tried the e.l.f. Cream Glide Lip Liners. And even though it's beautiful, I really enjoyed the formula. It's not an exact shade dupe, but this shade in particular is pretty. It doesn't say the shade name on the package. So I know that this is the beige one because that's the one that I put in my everyday makeup drawer. But LOL, if I had just put the bundle in, like very easy for that to slip my brain and my memory. I don't know why we don't have the shades on here. Like, am I blind? 
So even though it's not an exact shade dupe, if you're looking for a really nice beige, it is a very creamy, lovely formula. Very nice, wears very beautifully, and I approve. Now, one of the resolutions that I spoke about going into the new year was doing more shopping of my stash, which I'm happy to have continued to do, and I've been rediscovering some old faves, but I also really wanted to bring bright lipsticks back. So I have been wearing a lot of bright lipsticks. A lot of them have been discontinued in older shades, but I'm continuing to play with the stash that I have, and I appreciate your guys' feedback. Thank you so much for allowing me to use the shades that I have. And I've been discovering many shades that I haven't touched in a hot minute. This is a Valentina lipstick. It doesn't even say the name, but it is 306R. Very beautiful bright pink. I have been loving bringing bright lips back. I think it's so fun. It's such a fun way to dress up your life if you're lacking some color and brightness in your day. And it's also kind of an instant mood booster. If you're having a poopy little day, you put a bright, fun fuchsia pink on, you're like, ah, I am fabulous and I am ready to take on this day. <laughs> oh, it's such a pretty pink. I also just wiped it onto my chin. Sorry, BRB. I also love the idea that Alison Bornstein talks about a lot and it's just that thought of what do you want your style to be? What do you want to look like? How do you want to be perceived? And I love the idea of just being that old lady. Like make me be that 95 year old lady who is just decked out in all of my big chunky jewelry, wearing a fabulous chic outfit and rocking a bright red lipstick. Like if I have kids, I want them to know me as the grandma with my colorful lipsticks. Like let me always have a rainbow decking out on my lips. And that's something that even into old age, I'd love to be known for in my style. I can just like picture it, I can see it, I can feel it and I'm happy that the, the bright lips are back. I have a lash theory that I would like to discuss with you, if you guys know. I spent my entire life really just not using lash curlers, and I don't know when I pulled this out, but I'm sure it was some makeup artist, Nikki Makeup Recreation, some kind of video, I pulled this out. And then over the last few months, this last year, I've noticed that my lashes have kind of started to sink and curdle in a little bit, and I was like, maybe it's the way I'm sleeping. I've been sleeping on my side a lot more, so maybe I'm just like crunching my face in. But also, I thought to myself, is it because of the lash curlers that my eyelashes are bending in? This is just this is just something I thought about. It was a passing thought. I never used lash curlers in my life. I never had droopy lashes ever. And then suddenly around the same time of me pulling this out and using them more regularly, now my eyelashes are drooping. I don't know. I don't know, it's a mystery. And it was just something I thought about. So I think I'm just gonna test this theory for a little while. I'm gonna put the lash curlers aside and I'm gonna go back to my regular application life. So using the YSL Lash Clash Mascara, love this one always. And I also love to use the shade number two, the brown version for every day. So this continues to be a daily favorite. While also noting that I happily continue to rock the no mascara life on a, a regular basis as well. Just depends what mood you're in, what feeling I'm feeling that day. Lovely, that's the makeup done. And those are some of my makeup favorites. All right, we've moved on to the bathroom. I have some empties that I wanna discuss with you. La Roche-Posay, I believe I already talked about this, but if I did, I'm mentioning it again because it's great and I love it. Empty and I have another one. I had a backup ready to go, beautiful body lotion. The Glow Recipe Avocado Cleanser. I've got two of these because Dan and I each have one on each side of our counter and we both love it and use it. It's truly such a great cleanser, I love it. My Embrelisse Le Creme comes in squeezed every last morsel out of this one. It's a beautiful face cream, beautiful makeup primer, kind of everything in one. If you have very dry skin, this is a great option to try. A lot of you guys comment telling me that there is a sensitive skin one that has no fragrance. And I was like, does this have fragrance? <laughs> does this have fragrance? It says non comedogenic I don't react to it or get itchy or anything. So I'm fine with this one, but just know there is a sensitive skin one, allegedly, if you are concerned about that. Cuddly Resveratrol Lift, such a beautiful serum. I use this one at night. This is actually a very exciting product from Caudalie. They have lovely patents and they work with Harvard University to create their little mix of ingredients in here. And it is a retinol alternative for those of you who are scared of retinol. Perhaps if you're pregnant, you can't use retinols. Whatever reason it may be that you don't wanna use retinol, this is a proven retinol alternative. And I am excited to talk more about that later on. But I think this is a third bottle I've gone through. Uh, since they launched it, I did get a little preview of that one before they officially launched. And that was my third bottle and it is divine. <laughs> my Tatcha Indigo Overnight Repair. Ugh, this is the one that I bought in the Sephora sale in November and she is all used up. Beautiful, beautiful night cream. And very expensive too. <laughs> I also used up my Mirror Water Rub Solid Balm. This is something that I don't talk about a lot, but I keep this at my nightstand. I have a little drawer of all my good fun things and other fun things. <laughs> I just realized I can't wink, but wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> yeah, uh, this being one of them. This is something that I rub on my hands and my feet before I go to bed, especially in the winter when I'm more dry, especially when I'm sitting here with a broken toe. Ugh, 
I do give myself a little foot massage routinely and this, the smell, the texture of this, I wish I could show you and it wasn't an empty, but we'll absolutely purchase this again. It's something that doesn't get enough love from me, but it is an empty and I need a refill. I also used up the Kerastase Nutritive 8-Hour Magic Night Serum. This is another product that I don't talk about a lot, but it's something that I put on my hair when I'm going to bed. It is an overnight serum. I just drench a couple pumps through my, my roots all the way to my ends. I will also sleep on a towel when I have this in my hair because I, I have yet to find a little hair turban or sleeping cap or something that stays on my head overnight. So I do just put a towel whenever I'm masking overnight uh, and I'll do this the night before a hair wash day and it just makes my hair feel really very supple and hydrated. It is kind of a magic serum. I'm sure there's plenty of signs describing at length about what it does, but all I know is that it feels great and my hair loves it and I do have a backup. I believe I also included that Milan must give away in the hair giveaway. Yeah, she's beautiful. And a final empty I mentioned earlier, but my Chanel Le Beige Water Fresh Complexion Touch. I have this one in the shade B20. I do believe this is the second one I've used up of this. I can't recall, but you guys know. I, I'll scream it from the rooftops. One of my favorite base products of all time, and it is something that I absolutely will repurchase. I'm going to make my way through products that I have in my collection, but it's gonna be it's gonna be tough to not go pick this up. It is so good and a beautiful option for every day. And those are some of my empties. Now most of the other products in my skin, body, hair care routines are all pretty much the same, but two that were switched up following the empties. I got this Dew Instant Angel Lipid Rich Moisturizer, and this was something that is highly recommended by you guys for a very long time now. It's a brand that I've seen a lot of online, and I really wanted to try it, so I picked up the moisturizer. And in comparison to the Embrylisse, I find this one a little bit more watery. It's a little bit more juicy. The Embrylisse one is like a true thick, cream so it kind of just depends what your preference is in terms of feeling the ember at least for me is a little bit more thick and will be nice for winter this is kind of more going into that spring and the warmer weather this is a really great option and something that for me as i'm condensing my beauty routines is going to be another beautiful option that works as a face cream as well as my makeup primer so it really gives that juicy glow it's beautiful i'm loving it so far and then i've also been using the biosance squalane ectoin overnight rescue and this was another product that i also got to test long before it launched and I'm very happy that it's finally been here. So this is kind of replacing my Tatcha Overnight Rescue. So in my routine, I'm using this pretty much on the nights that I'm not using my retinol, just as an extra wash of hydration on the skin. And in comparison to the Tatcha one, very much not a similar product in how it feels and looks and applies onto the skin, but it's kind of a similar <laughs> end result. They're very intensive hydrating overnight masks is how I look at it. The Tatcha one is more of a serum. It's much more wet, much more ooey gooey. This one is much more of a thick cream, a thick white cream, and they both feel amazing. They're both super hydrating and they do wonders on the skin and I wake up feeling like a glowy little angel. So those are the two products that are new in in the skincare routine. The final favorite that I wanted to mention are my nails. The manicure that I have been rocking. I have been playing with the short nails for the last couple of months and I've really been enjoying it. I feel like I have full mobility in my hands back. <laughs> I was rocking the long nails for a very long time and even though I look back at my wedding photos and I'm like, ugh. They just look so beautiful and so elegant and feminine and gorgeous and I love it. I really do. I love the look of it. I, I yearn for my long nails, but I do find that the short nails are much more playful. I feel like I can play with color a little bit more, even though I'm going to have to go back to nude nails in this next week for a project I'm doing. But. <laughs> For the utility and function of my everyday life, the short nails have been a dream. I just haven't had to worry about my nails. My nails don't break in the same way or I don't fear it in the same way as I did with my long nails. And it's just kind of brought me a lot more peace and again, a lot more function in my everyday life. So I am back on the short nails train. I know it's been a minute, but I've just been feeling so much better for it. And I think going into the spring and summer, it'll be fun to just play with colors again. I was looking back through my old photos and I'm like, when was I this spicy, colorful lady? I had like bright pink, bright orange nails. I played with so much color. I'm like, who, who is she? Where did she go? We went for much more neutral, elegant waters, but I'm excited to have a little bit more fun with it. So I'm curious to know if you guys also jumped on the short nail train in this new year. And what are your thoughts on it? I, I do feel like the long nails are just so much more fun in photos and whatnot, but I just can't be bothered, honestly. I, I need the short nails in my life and they've been great. So the short nail Manny is here to stay. And that, my friends, is a wrap on all my favorites. Those are some of the things that I have been loving this month. Please let me know in the comments down below. As always, tell me what you have been loving. Tell me what you have been not loving. Let's have a little chat. The new year is already breezing by. I cannot believe that February is upon us already. But other than hashtag Togate, LOL, uh, the new year is off to a flying start. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, taking a little look-see at some of the things that have been fabulous and that I've been loving this month. Thanks so much for being here, as always. And I will see you all very soon for a new video.
Bye.